If you can solve the problems I'm about to show you, you're basically golden for the Oz5 Arithmetic Reasoning section. Seriously, if you've ever worried about math sneaking up on you on test day, relax. These five problem types are the repeat offenders. Nail these and you'll walk into the test like you own the place. I'm Sandra, your iSpot prep coach here on the U.S. Military Prep Channel from Study.com. And instead of just showing you the textbook way to solve them, I'll give you some tips and memory tricks so the steps actually stick. Let's roll. First up is distance, rate, and time problems. I know, a lot of people hate these, but let me break it down. The magic formula is distance equals rate multiplied by time. Here's the trick to remembering it. Distance is the end of your journey, just like it's the end of the formula. To get there, you multiply rate and time because multiplying gets you there the fastest and you want to get to your destination, the end of this problem, as fast as you can, right? Here's an example of finding the distance. If a car goes 60 miles per hour for two and a half hours, how far does it go? Let's plug that into our formula. 60 times 2.5, because 0.5 is half, is 150. Now, sometimes the odds vibe might flip the script on you and give you the end and ask you to find the time and rate. Since we're already considering distance as the end point, we just need to reverse it. And reversing multiplication is what? Right, dividing. So if we have this problem, a bus goes 180 miles in three hours, what is its speed? We just rearrange our formula to divide the distance by the time, since those are the numbers we have. We do that and we get 60 miles per hour. And here's a pro tip, always write down the formula before plugging in the numbers. Test stress can even make simple math for like advanced rocket science. Writing it down clears the fog. All right, let's talk percentages. These show up all over the odds vibe. And the good news is they're not as scary as they look. To find a percent, divide part, the smaller number, by the whole, the larger number, then multiply by 100. Remember that a percent is always something out of 100. That's why multiplying by 100 is the very last step. So just think of it like this. First, find your fraction, part over whole, then crank it up into a percent by multiplying by 100. My first example is also a bonus testing strategy. Now, imagine a multiple choice question with four answers. You're not sure which one is right, but you can cross off two that are obviously wrong. That means you've eliminated half the choices. Let's plug that into our formula. Two divided by four is 0.5, and 0.5 multiplied by 100 is 50. So you got rid of 50% of your answer choices. Let's try a more detailed example you might actually see on the test. Suppose you got a question about finding the percentage score if a student got 36 questions right out of 50. Here's what we do step by step. First, we divide the part, their 36 correct answers, by the whole, all 50 questions. 36 divided by 50 equals 0.72. Now, we want to multiply that by 100 because that's what makes it a percent. 0 0.72 times 100 is 72%. That's a passing score, and that's exactly how percent problems work on the Oz5. And here's your pro tip. Always remember that percent means out of 100. If you start there, the steps make way more sense and are easier to remember. Now, let's talk about ratios and proportions. So remember how we just talked about percentages? We said percent is the part divided by the whole, then multiplied by 100. Well, guess what? That part over whole thing, that's actually a ratio. The difference is, with percents, we always turn it into something out of 100. With ratios and proportions, we don't have to do that. <laughs> We're just comparing two things and then we can scale that comparison up or down. A ratio is just this to that. And a proportion is when one ratio equals another ratio. Don't worry, I'm not gonna lose you here. Let me simplify this. Imagine pairs that always belong together. Peanut butter and jelly, socks and shoes. If you mix them up, like peanut butter with socks, it's going to be one nasty sandwich. Same with ratios. Keep the same kinds of things on the same side of your comparison or your answer will come out nonsense. Let's start with an easy problem. Say you have a recipe that has a ratio of two cups of sugar to three cups of flour. If you double the sugar to four cups, how much flour do you add? Keep sugar with sugar and flour with flour. We multiply the sugar by two to get four. So we cross multiply to do the same thing with the flour. Multiply it by two and we get six cups. Follow? If cross multiplying feels like mystery math, let's try a different method. Find the value of one first. Here's the problem. 
three pencils cost $1.50. How much do 10 pencils cost? First, let's find the cost of one. To do that, take $1.50 and divide it by three. That gives you 50 cents for each pencil. Once you know that, it's easy. Multiply 50 cents by 10 pencils and you get $5. Two different methods, same answer. Whichever one clicks for you is the one you should use. Just remember the golden rule with ratios. Keep like things with like things, pencils with pencils, dollars with dollars. Okay, time for work problems. These are the ones that ask how long it takes two people or two machines to finish a job together. They look tough, but the steps are always the same. Here's the key idea. Work rate is just how much of the job gets done in one hour. If a job takes four hours, then in one hour, you finish one fourth of it. If a job takes six hours, then in one hour, you finish one sixth. You with me so far? Now let's do an example. If one person can paint a wall in four hours and another can do it in six, how long if they work together? We're going to start out by figuring out how much of the job each painter does in one hour. The first painter does one fourth. The second painter does one sixth. Next, we add those together, but we can't add fourths and sixths directly. So we need a common denominator, which is 12. One fourth is the same as three twelfths. One sixth is the same as two twelfths. Add them together and in one hour, they finish five twelfths of the job. Now add, how many hours would it take to finish the whole job at this pace? We do that by flipping that upside down and dividing 12 by five. That comes to 2.4. That means the total time is 2.4 hours. But what does that 0.4 mean? It's part of an hour, not 0.4 minutes. To turn it into minutes, just multiply the decimal by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. So 0.4 times 60 equals 24 minutes. So the total time is two hours and 24 minutes. It's really just four steps. Figure out how much work is done by each person in one hour, adding those together, dividing that inverted fraction, and then converting the time. Pause the video and try this one on your own. How did you do? You got that machine A will be one fifth and machine B is one tenth, right? Then add them together. That's three tenths of the job done in one hour. Flip it to divide 10 by three and you get 3.3 .3 hours. And 0.3 hours is 18 minutes. If you didn't get three hours and 18 minutes, go back and try those steps again. A pro tip for this is to always break it down to how much gets done in one hour. Once you've got that, it's just asking, how many hours would it take to finish the whole job? Last up is simple interest problems. These are the money questions. How much you earn on an investment or how much extra you owe on a loan? Here's the formula. Interest equals the principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by the time. The trick to remembering this is everything gets multiplied, just like you want to see your money multiplied. Silly? Yeah, it's silly, but it's effective. Let's try one together. If you invest $200, the principal at 5% interest, the rate for three years, the time, how much interest do you earn? So we start by converting the percent to a decimal. 5% becomes 0 0.05. Always do this first or your numbers will be way off. Then we start multiplying. 200 times 0 0.05 times three equals 30. So the interest you earn is $30. Now you do one. If you borrow $1,000 at 6% interest for two years, how much interest will you owe? Pause here a second to figure it out. Did you remember to make the percentage a decimal? So your equation would have been 1,000 times 0 0.06 times 2, which would be $120. Your pro tip is to always watch that percentage. If you forget to turn it into a decimal, you'll end up with crazy answers, like thinking you owe $12,000 instead of $120. Convert first, then multiply. Here's a quick bonus tip. On test day, don't freeze. If you don't know the answer to something, eliminate ones that are obviously wrong and take your best guess from the rest. This is what's called an educated guess, and it's better than leaving it blank. If you get it right, it could even bump up your score. Remember, the odds vibe is timed, so use testing strategies to help you out. Check out our other videos on those. All right, that's it. If you can solve these five types of problems, distance, rate, 
time, percentages, ratios, work problems, and simple interests, you'll be ready for the OS5 arithmetic reasoning section. Practice them, drill the formulas, and you'll walk into the test with confidence. If this helped, give me a like and drop a comment with the problem type you struggle with the most. We might already have a video on it, or we could make one for you. Hit the subscribe button to get more pro tips like these as soon as they drop, and let's crush this test together.